Hi, I'm Mighty CS Man, and welcome to week two of CSC 142 Intro to Programming. This week we're going to be talking about data types and for loops. If you didn't see week one, you should definitely go check out that video and learn more about what this course is about, what you're going to learn, and, um, and find out what, what we missed last week. So just as a quick reminder, this is 142, which is Intro to Programming. 143 is the follow-on course, Introduction to Data Structures. Both of these series are available on my YouTube channel. So this week we're going to be learning about data types and for loops. The actual chapter title is Primitive Data. Primitive sounds kind of funny, but that just means that they, these are base classes built into Java, like ints and doubles and strings, uh, and not create classes that you will create in Java yourself. And then Definite loops means loops where you they have a specific um, start and end. Uh, they're not indefinite where uh, for like a, a while loop. And so you're going to be learning about some basic data types concepts. So those ints, those uh, strings, uh, variables, very simple stuff. The for loop, how to do that in Java. Managing complexity is really the most interesting part of the chapter. It's about not only how to use variables that are scoped appropriately, but also how to use, um, well, they don't really tell you much about how to use good variable names. It's it's a big thing at Microsoft, and um, I definitely would tell you to not use the variables that they give you, which are like I and J. I, through all, out all my videos, you'll see that I continue to tell you to use intelligently chosen names, such as row and uh, column, um, that really tell you what's going on. And um, and then they also have a case study of how to print out an ASCII um, art of an hourglass. So to learn this material this week, I've got quite a few videos for you. First, there's going to be the lecture on chapter two. Then I've got a overview of the practice it problems, which I have listed down here. And then uh, the homework for this week is actually in the back of chapter two. It's programming problem number eight of the Space Needle. And so there's not a lot that they give in there compared to the assignment that I give to my class. Or sorry, it's, it's number seven. But um, you can look at it in the book and you could do it at home. And um, so this is an introduction and motivation for the Space Needle. I actually went out to Germany and took a look at the building that inspired the Space Needle. Building uh, Java Programs Chapter 2 ASCII Art Example is uh, a walkthrough of a, si a similar type of problem that's very similar. And then I talk about the Space Needle assignment. And then I um, have uh, another walkthrough on the ASCII rocket ship, um, which is actually problem number six, I believe. And um, you can see how I did that rocket ship and then apply it to the Space Needle. And I also have a, a nested for loops tutorial because all of these ASCII art examples are some fairly complex nested for loops. And while any hacker can figure it out, I really do suggest you learn to build your loops the way that is described in the book and to use a commenting form like I give. Because if you do that, then I can guarantee you that there is no nested for loop that you can't conquer. And just a preview for next week, we're going to be talking about parameters and objects, objects that you will create, um, um, well, actually, more objects that are predefined uh, for you, the string and scanner objects, and also the math class methods. So these are things that we use pretty much the entire rest of the course, so they're really important that you learn. So that's it for week two. I hope you follow all those videos and you do the practice hits, and I'll see you back for week three.